Good evening, good evening, good evening, my brothers and sisters. We're getting ready. Grab your Bibles, grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles tonight. We're getting ready to go into the book of the Bible. Amen. We thank God tonight. We are excited. We know he has a special word for us tonight. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for coming on. Touch a friend. Tell them to join us tonight. Amen. Touch a friend. Ask them to join us tonight. What a time, what a time, what a time. Amen. So we know that a lot is about to get taken down in place. We're in a new year, 2022. At Mount Zion, we're saying the year of me and you. Amen? So I'm excited tonight. Let's just prepare our hearts and minds for the word. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to take over right now and that we are going to move aside and let God have his way. Father in Jesus' name, Father in Jesus' name, Lord help us in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we come tonight to thank you, Lord, for just being God and God alone. God, we ask it to be anyone, Lord God, has not heard your word tonight. May he or she have the spirit of conviction, Lord, to unite with you. God, for us who've known your Lord, Lord God, we've backslidden in our ways. We come tonight in the spirit of repentance to reunite with you. For you are the part of it, made us your clay. Shape us, make us, and mold us, Lord God, and what you would have us to be. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray tonight. Amen, 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 amen. I'm excited tonight. Good to see some people coming on, all right. Good to see you, Sister Jamie, all right. Good to see you, Sister Sharon, all right, Brother Cameron. All right, uh, Minister Shaw, let's get into what God would have with us tonight. We're going to be coming from the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Amen. We're not talking about a man making coffee, all right. Y'all can get over that. That's old, all right. We're talking about the original book of Hebrews, the 57th book in the Bible. Amen. That's right. It was made for us to learn something from it. Uh, the author, they're saying, is from the writings of the Apostle Paul, but some believe it might have been uh, Barnabas. And so you kind of got a little, uh, not quite a confirmation on that, depending on what theology school you went to. But with that being said, one thing that is curious about it is the book is entitled Hebrews. So it almost as if they're talking about the race of Hebrews, but I think it's just talking about the spirit of the Hebrew mind, the spirit of the Hebrew faith, the spirit of knowing that God is God and God alone. And so by understanding that our calling is the most important thing, we should be dwelling on what God would have us to do until he comes and gets us. Amen? Amen tonight. I want to bless you guys with that important tonight. So we're going to be looking at the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, and I'm going to look at verse 1. Amen. Verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. And he says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And my brothers and sisters, today we're going to go into a series that God has placed us on starting this week. It's going to talk about let us begin again. We're in a new year. We're always talking about a resolution, but I want to talk about a restoration. Amen? Amen. I know it's very good about having a resolution, New Year's resolution. Oh, I'm going to lose weight. Oh, I'm going to get my finances better. Oh, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. All those things we kind of put in place to show ourselves that we have some kind of goal, ambition, or desire to get accomplished that we did not get accomplished, uh, set, or placed the year before. Amen? So it's almost as if we make this semi-promise our, to ourselves, or uh, maybe we make it in front of others, that we're going to do something, but we have to ask ourselves, if you really go back and look at any of the quote-unquote resolutions you've done, how many did you really complete? I know y'all, it's quiet for a minute, that's okay. But we're going to talk about how important it is 
to not just say something, but to do something. We're going to go into not just hearing the word, but be ye doers of the word. Because we're in a time and a season, my brothers and my sisters, there's a lot to hear. Amen? You can hear somebody at 10, somebody at 1030, somebody before I came on, somebody while I'm on, and somebody when I get off. So there's always something you can hear. But what is causing you to do something with what you heard? We're going to go into that tonight. We're talking about a lot of people got a lot to say, but nothing to do. Many have a comment, few have a commitment. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what God is going to do tonight. So please, please, please watch party, y'all. Get some family and friends to get on tonight. Uh, I want to give a, a personal shout out to all of those family and friends who are involved in, in whatever personal fast God has put you on. Uh, here at Mount Zion, we're into a, just a seven-day fast that we're going through and they little different levels that we're in on that. But I want to pray that God is giving you an enlightenment in those seven days. I want to pray that God is giving you an enrichment and an encouragement in those seven days. I want to pray that God is uplifting you in those seven days. We're just excited about what God is going to do. So let's see what the word will bring for us tonight. And so on behalf of myself, my beautiful First Lady Tamika Murray, and the Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian Church family, we bring greetings tonight talking about, let us begin again. Amen? Amen. I'm excited about that. How many want to begin over again? Uh, and somebody said, well, you know, I like what I got going. That's fine and that works for you. But when you grow in Christ, every round go higher and higher. That's a new level. That's a new beginning. And then you ought to be doing that on a random and a regular basis. God should be taking you up a new level continuously until he comes to get you. Amen. So he says, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about what so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight every weight and the sin with dust so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us amen and so we're hearing tonight wherefore seeing we have to see he said also our compass and what they're talking about is compassion you ought to be able to see the compassion about what god would have of you to do and that compassion should be seen in front of others it should be witnessed by others Folks should be able to say that you are a compassionate person, but you must first have a personal passion. From your passion gives you compassion for those who are in the same walk with you. And so I want to ask you tonight, as you begin to begin again, are you getting that hunger again? Are you getting back on track and wanting to do something things special in your life? Are you really saying, you know what, I really want to increase my prayer life, Pastor? I, you know, I, I, I admit, I got, I got a little bit of prayer going, but I really want to just become regular in my prayer. I want to be, become focused in my prayer. I want, to, I want to see my prayer not just change, help change me, but help change others and help change the environment that I'm in and the communities that I'm in and the neighborhoods that I'm in. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. It is easy to brag about what you have accomplished. But it is so, so enlightening, enlightening and so compassionate to be able to talk about what you see God has allowed you to help someone else in. Somebody has been able to get better and stronger in their prayer life. Somebody has been able to be, able to, uh, be a, a prayer or a warrior, a praiser, a worshiper, simply because they've had the chance to experience the realm and, and reality of God and exampling it with someone else. I want to encourage you, but he tells us to go out into the hedges and highways. Make that word known, but we got to be able to say that my life matched my lips. Mm. Mm. He says, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Are we setting that example that others cannot help themselves but to say that that man or that woman, that boy or that girl, he is the child of God. Why do you say that? Because even when Jesus had died on the cross, had already ascended himself back up with the Father, they said a Roman surgeon, a centurion, if you will, he took a spear and he stabbed him in his side. And they said blood and water came running down. And they said the centurion now, they say he was saved, they say he was a believer. He said, this must be the Son of God. We have the power to change folk who didn't think they could be changed, brothers and sisters. 
You have the power within you. Let you begin again within yourself. Let you begin again within your prayers. Let you begin again within your prayers. Let you begin again in your worship and in your belief. You're seeing, you're sowing and saying what thus saith the Lord. But you got to do something, brother. You have to come with a mind to change. Can I count on you tonight? Can I count on you to just go back and review the things that you know you need to get rid of and you start making those adjustments and changes as you go along and walk? Let's see what he says. He says, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Why would God put us into the compassion of having witnesses around us? Because the goal, brother and sisters, is to help bring those who have not yet had the chance to experience the Lord that God for themselves an opportunity to not just be a part of what the house of God is about, but also help bring in others. So you have to ask yourself, when you walk into the room, do you are you that kind of a magnet, if you will, a spirit magnet that others want to get into where the word of God get into prayer get into praise are you that kind of fire starters I call it that you can cause others that when you give a praise they give a praise and it's not about trying to impress yourself on other people it's not about trying to be better than other folk but it is about being different and my brothers and sisters when you decide to be different the Holy Ghost make you better amen amen I believe that tonight and so we're going into this. He's saying, wherefore seeing, my brothers and sisters, we got to start getting into the mindset. And I'm going to go further than the scriptures even giving us in this here. Sometimes we just glance at things. Meaning we just, we kind of see something go by. We walk by something. We don't take a full attention to it. So we glance at it. And then sometimes we do see things. That means we have a full vision of what it is. We're able to recognize what it is. We're able to discern what it is. We're able to determine what it is. I want you to go on a step further. I want you to start seeking. S-double-E-K-I-N-G. Because then that says what I see confirms to what I desire. Therefore, it's God's decision. I want you to start seeking for a stronger life in God, a stronger reading of God's word, a stronger desire to, 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 to just get out upon the hedges and highways, not be ashamed of your past because you're living in your present and you know that God is setting you up for a brightful future. Don't allow what has hindered you for so long going into this new year. Let's begin again. Let's do this together. There are a lot of things that I did not accomplish in the year of 2021, but I go back to say there's a lot of things that I did accomplish. And I thank God for that accomplishment, whatever they might have been. But I also say I can't hang on what I've done in the past. I got a new track. I got a new road to ride. Because God's going to send me a new people, new place, a new thing to talk to and be around. So he says, he says, let us, let us lay aside every weight. My brothers and sisters, you have to ask yourself, if you're going to begin again, are you willing to unload what you don't need? Are you willing to just drop those things that have been hindering for far too long? Because we got to be honest. A lot of us, we like to hang on to them because they make us feel safe. What are you saying, Pastor? Some of us, fear makes us feel safe. Some of us, anger makes us feel safe. Some of us, depression, dare I say it, makes us feel safe. We're enlightened by it because it's a safe area for us to say and do what we say and do. Whereas in we go into a new lifestyle now, guys, we got to be conscious of how we operate, conscious of what we say, conscious of what we do. We can't just live for the moment. We got to live in the movement. And this is what it's telling us. So he says we must let aside every weight. Brothers and sisters, the Bible talks about having a millstone around your neck. Which is only going to pull you down to drown. Let it go. Begin again. It's okay, as the folks say, to go back to the drawing board. It's okay to start over and revamp how you're going to do things this new year. You don't have to go through uh, 52 weeks of just doing it wrong to say you did it. 
when the Bible tells us what? Be not weary in well-doing. So we want to have a desire now to do things well. And doing things well means doing it in the spirit of the Holy Ghost. But what does it take to lay aside every weight? Because some things are heavier than we would think. Well, brothers and sisters, we got to also be prepared to go into prayer with others. Allow others to help us in our prayer. Some things, our prayer, we need help. Do you have a prayer group? Do you have a prayer partner? Do you have somebody you can call in the midnight hour and y'all just begin to pray on the phone? Nobody need to know specifics. Nobody know what's going on. Nobody need to know exactly what's happening. They just need to, you just call and say, sis, I need you to pray. Bro, I just need you to pray. And you do this. Ask yourself. Nobody calls you for prayer? Are you prayer accessible? Some of us are gossip accessible, but we're not prayer accessible. We got to lay down some weights, brothers and sisters. Then he says, And the sin will thus easily beset us. Look what he says. He says, Lay aside every weight and the sin. So why is he separating between the two? Because the weight that we carry is what keeps the sin around. What do you mean, Pastor? If I keep the, the weight of depression on me, then the sin of being separated from God is still there. If I keep the weight of anger upon me, then the sin of what I say and what I do and how I act and react is still upon me. And I can have the best of intentions. I can mean well, want to do right, want to make things right the best I can. But in reality, I'm hurting. And it's okay to be honest with yourself and say that, you know what, I have some pains. I have some things that I ain't sure about. And perhaps I'm being honest tonight. I, 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 I've been questioning. I've been double-checking, double-minded. Uh, but I just want to, I want to be released tonight. I want to begin again. I want to begin again in the spirit of knowing that God wants to do something great with inside me. And I want to know that I'm not hindering his work within me by trying to do my own thing. I hope somebody's hearing me tonight. He said, with thou so easily beset us. So he's saying this sin, you know, it's kind of funny. We begin to rationalize the sin. That it, it, it's, it's almost acceptable to have it. Um, because of what John did to me, it's okay for me to be angry about how he did me. But not realizing that that anger, the Bible says anger but sin not, but that anger is causing me to sin. So therefore, that anger has been easily besetting me because it works around my emotions. You know, Boquisha, she said this, she did that. Bobby, Ricky, and Mike, they done all that to me. We love to bring up the word church hurt. However, we don't bring up any other kind of hurt. Church hurt has been categorized church hurt. But there's family hurt. There's self hurt. So where do you go when you're hurting? Where do you turn? Who do you go to? Who do you seek for godly counsel? And brothers and sisters, let me tell you what the enemy has rationalized everything to. You got couples that want to get married by a pastor, but don't want a pastor to pastor. Want to get married in a church, but don't want a church home. I know that, that that's a little rough, that's tight, that's, but it's right, and it's righteous. And it is up to us who are believers of the gospel to quit denying the truths that are set before us. Brothers, we're only going to get one shot around the, around the tree, okay? When your time is up, 
is up. And so don't waste your time and your timing with God, with the frivolous things of the world. Many of us are still carrying weights from when we were children. Now we're in our 30s and 40s. And some of us in, dare I say it, 50s. Dare I say it, 60s. Dare I say it, 70s and 80s. Still carrying that pain. We become excellent swimmers. But all this weight that we're carrying. And all this sin that we're carrying. And so we're able to manipulate that sin into... Uh, we're hurt. And I'm not denying anybody that they've been hurt. I don't deny it at all. What I do deny is that the nerd, that, that, that hurt is your God. Because it's not your God. And anything you worship is your God. Anything you give all your time to is your God. Anything you give all your thought processes to and, and, and your attention to is your God. You don't feel compelled to pray about anything? You don't give, feel compelled to just, just reach out and voice and say, Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Not once. And just because you're able to articulate the scriptures of the Bible doesn't give you a pass. The word of God is meant to be embedded in our bloodstream. To be inhaled and exhaled like air. To be put into our mind at, like memories and dreams and visions. That's what the word of God is for. So that when we act, speak, do any kind of belief, we got something to come from. He says, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Brothers and sisters, you got to take your time. Hmm? We have to take our time. Let us run with patience. Let us run with patience. Let us run. Why does it say? Why didn't it just say let us run the race? He says, let us run with patience. Let us run with patience. For the race is not given to the swift. <laughs> For all y'all jackrabbits out there. The race is not given to the strong. For all y'all that like to tear up something real quick. But, <laughs> pardon me. The race is given to who can endure to the end. And here's what's really crucial about this part of the scripture. He says, let us run the race, run with patience the race that is set before us. One thing you have to remember, though we may all be on a similar track field, we all got our own lane. We all got our own lane that we got to run in. I can't run in your lane, and you can't run in mine. But the beautiful thing is every now and then, when you're running around, and you don't feel like you're worthy, and you don't feel like somebody's paying attention, or nobody cares, God will send somebody to pass your baton and let you know everything's going to be all right. And so I want to encourage you tonight to let you know everything. It's going to be okay. That the Spirit of God has blown the whistle. That the, that the gun has gone off and the race has begun. But I want you to take your time. Enjoy the sun coming up in the morning. Enjoy the night setting itself. One of my sons, he's big about photography. and uh, He likes to take pictures of the sun setting and send them to me. And, uh, you know, the first couple he seems to send to me, I look at it, I glanced. <laughs> but then I began to see he was looking for the sun to set. So in reality, it was more value to him 
than it was to me because he was seeking that sunset. He was seeking that sunrise. What are you seeking? What are you asking God to do for you that you can do something for someone else? We're in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. We're talking about let us begin again. This is our part one of our series tonight. Let us begin again. I hope God is enriching you in every way possible. Please don't let this go away. Transfer this after this goes back into uh, an actual recorded session. I want you to send it to somebody. But I want you to remember the story of the Lord Jesus Christ and how he began again when he decided to come and be born in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothing. He decided to go about the hedges and highways, healing the sick, getting the lame to walk, and raising the dead, and still knew the end, what was going to be the expected end, as he was taken before the cross, sat there from the sixth to the ninth hour, ridiculed, spit on, beat on, crown of thorns on his head. And the Bible said after seven powerful sayings, he died. Put into a borrowed tomb. Those very sins that we carried out, carrying on and probably will carry, he died for that. But he said early one Sunday morning that he got up, but not some, not most, but all power in his hand. And he said, you know what, I go to prepare a place for you. And I'm going to send you a comforter. But he never said it would be comfortable. So you have to ask yourself, even in the most uncomfortable of times in your life, will you still call upon the comforter? Will you still ask him to look at you in the error of all your ways and say, God, I'm still here. Make me new. Let's pray tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. Lord, we thank you that if anyone who wishes to give their life to Christ, they would do so now, God, by confession and belief that you died for their sins. And you said they shall be saved. God, maybe tonight there's someone who wants to become a part of something great in the house of God. Compel them, God, to reach out to our ministry here or any ministry that they see fit that we might bring them in and Help them with the decisions that they've made. Father God, if anyone tonight that would like to sow into what we're doing here at Mount Zion Tabernacle, because we don't just believe in sowing into the house of God, we believe in putting it right back in the community. If they do, God, send them to the website of www.mztcc.org that they might bring in a divine sowing unto this house of God. God, we thank you for the members that are here. We thank you for the members that have been here. We thank you for the members that are coming. And God, we ask right now you will give us the power and belief in what family is really about, what faith is really about, and what fellowship is really about. God, we come to say that we're sorry of any sins we may have committed, and we know that you have the power to wash it whiter than snow. And so tonight we ask that you would do so. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray tonight. Amen, amen. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Once again, please join me. we got a few more weeks of Let Us Begin Again. Uh, on behalf of myself, my beautiful First Lady Tamika Murray, the Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian Church family, where 2022 is the year of me and you. Come join us. Our Sunday morning services are at 1130 a.m. right here in the parking lot, live and in charge. And we'll be right back here on a Wednesday night at 7 p.m. just to give you an encouragement of knowing that he will take care of you. God bless you. Good night.